Hello, good afternoon. Hi there. And welcome to series two of Meet at the Hotel Bar. After being tangled up in tabloid dramas, hitting the podcast charts, and unearthing some of the best kept touring stories you will ever hear, we are back again. Bigger and better. Who knew that was even possible? If you are new here, we are JC, Freddie and Huss from the band Flaws, a three-piece indie pop band from London via Huddersfield. Since we started touring and traveling the globe, we realized that there are so many funny things that happen on and off stage, and so many stories that never get shared with the rest of the world. They just stay in the dressing rooms and tour buses of the bands and artists you love. Until now, in this podcast, we're lifting the lid on life on the road. And where better to meet up and tell those touring tales than a place every touring musician knows well, the trusty hotel bar. You say crusty? Crusty, yeah. A lot of them are, especially the Halo bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, take that back. Okay. We love the Halo bar. In today's episode, we met up with Shea from Gorillas in Islington's finest Hilton hotel bar. Everybody loves a Hilton. Gorillas, the brainchild of Damon Albarn and Jamie Hewlett, was originally a virtual band with fictional characters until they began touring as a real band with real members. They have toured and headlined festivals all over the world, including Coachella and the mighty Glastonbury. Having sold over 33 million records worldwide, they have some of the most iconic bass lines out there, of which Shea, the bassist, has the pleasure of playing every night. Shea was a real gent, wise beyond his years and full of insights, as you'll soon hear. Stay tuned to hear stories of what it feels like to accidentally leave your bass on mute whilst playing Coachella's main stage, what it's like having Damon Albarn as a best mate and taking on sobriety and winning. A round of sparkling water, some with and some without a slice of lemon, were on the table ready for this one. This is Shea from Gorillas coming up on Meet at the Hotel Bar. Meet at the Hotel Bar. Cool, I think we're rolling. So, um, Welcome, Shea. Thank you so much for, for coming in. My pleasure. Um, nice one, guys. We're currently... Um, what, what's the name of the place we're in? Hilton? The Hilton? In, in, yeah. <laughs> uh, Hilton? Yeah, we're in Hilton and Angel. <laughs> currently kind of baking in, in a it's sort hot, of isn't it? glass It's hot, isn't it? Yeah. Someone's glass making house. a coffee in the hotel bar over there. I nice stupidly put noise. a vest on underneath my T-shirt. So. And a leather jacket, yeah. mate. I'm paying for it. That's a lot. <laughs> See, this is where we do miss out on the visual aspect. <laughs> yeah, well, we can let them paint, paint whatever picture they, they like. We'll take a selfie at the end. <laughs> I just turned yeah. up in pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get straight into it. So you have literally just got back um, from playing the mighty Coachella. Yes. With Gorillaz. You were like, was it like the second headliners? Was it like... We were main support, so it was us and then Bad Bunny on, on main stage. Yeah. So sick. How was that? <laughs> it it was great, and it was a mixed bag. Oh, let really? Me say that. So the first weekend was terrible. Oh, why? <laughs> like, um, no offense, but I've never experienced such a dry crowd in such a large quantity. Like, and it wasn't just us. It was the that was the vibe for the whole weekend. And in general, weekend one, it's so um, it's so guest list. It's so influencer. Oh, it's so, so cool, aren't they? Yeah, it's not. And it's a really expensive ticket anyway, so it kind of uh, limits or it forces a certain kind of person to go. Yeah. Like, even when Burner Boy went on before us and he was killing and, like, it wasn't really, no one was really vibing. It was just like, what's going on here? So that was really hard because um, it was, like, almost 100,000 people or something and it was really, really hard work. Like, not not making any noise or clapping. It was just like, and we did great objectively, I think. Yeah. Um, but I think, thankfully, what we did was we didn't capitulate. We just we did we did our thing, and also I think it's always good to f- um, like we, they don't owe us anything either. So like I don't like going in sort of expecting people to love it. Yeah. It's actually quite good sometimes to earn it, like to go out and mm-hmm. see what you like. Because I guess that the, you really test your metal or find out what kind of band you are when things aren't going well. Yeah, yeah, um, and. It wasn't ideal, but we still smashed it. I think, um, like, it wasn't our crowd. Do you know what I mean? But we did our best. And then, but then the second weekend was really good. Um, was, I don't know what it is, but apparently the second weekend is more vibey. Like people cut loose a bit more. Um, and yeah, even though it was slightly slower to start, but we really got them going by the end. And um, but in general, I had a great time. The weather was great. Yeah. Um, it's a really clean festival. Oh, okay. Um, like 
they literally put grass like they roll turf out everywhere and like water it it's like there's grass because it well, is literally in the middle of the desert it's isn't in the middle it? of the desert yeah <laughs> and it's like 30 something degrees like and it was like 26 at night so it was like no joke it was serious heat um, I feel for the people maybe that's also why because they've been stood out in the sun the all day the gardeners especially yeah exactly <laughs> keeping but that see, grass alive but well, when we were sound checking in the morning you can see the like big trucks of like water just like spraying the whole like field um, yeah no it's quite a lot quite an undertaking it's, you can see they spend a lot of money on yeah, it they yeah, do a good yeah. job backstage was great catering was great um, but no I feel really grateful to have, to have done it yeah. sick and what do people do like so obviously it's over two weekends it's the same lineup. what do you do in that week what we did we went to LA I was going to say surely everyone just goes to LA and then it's just like one big I just imagine it to be one big party of everyone yeah, just being there yeah I think there. there's, there's lots of in events. town there's lots, lots of, of events, sessions yeah. right lots of sessions lots of studio link ups um I've actually got family there, so I uh, hung out with my family, hooked up some friends. But we also did um, uh, Jimmy Kimmel um, live. Oh, yeah, no, I saw in, that. In Sick. The, yeah, with song the Gorillas have with Beck, and we performed that in the middle. So it was a mixture of a couple of days off, but also a bit of work. Um, and then, yeah, back to Palm Springs on the Thursday. Sick. Yeah, so I know you mentioned um, interesting being being there. What, what would you say your favourite city is to tour what's your favorite place anywhere in south america okay um a i'm kind of i have a soft spot for south america because i i did my sixth form in ecuador so i like i sort of i speak spanish and like just like mm-hmm. like latin american culture means a lot um there's also a link with like afro-cuban music like there's a lot of rhythmic similarities with sort of african and west african as well which um kind of resonates with me um, but the response that we've had in South America kind of beats ev- like anybody out the water it kind of no matter where you play it kind of feels like a Champions League final or something yeah. it's like it's literally people going like, oh ole, 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 between songs it's carnage between songs yeah it's absolute carnage and you know we have to have like extra security at hotels like barriers and stuff because people just find out where you stay and just like pack it out oh, wow out front. yeah no it's it's you feel so much love but it's not like it's not intense in a bad way it's intense in a pure love um it's a very warm passionate um continent um and very very musical lots of interest in music um and just art in general it's a super arty continent so it feels like a bit of a second home really oh cool yeah, we need yeah. to head out there i feel like everyone's answer is like South America or done. Mexico is hit like, Mexico yeah, and just go to, down I mean Mexico is I mean the food there is yeah. incredible yeah. I think whenever we go to LA we basically live off Mexican yeah yeah so yeah. I think for that alone we should we should get there yeah um, Mexi- Mexican uh, Mexico is actually a really great example of just all the arts are just so well represented there even like food as well like um, crazy great food great vibes yeah is there anywhere that you've that you've yet to tour that, that's like on a, do you have a list Here's for a sure list. like I've never done like Southeast Asia I haven't done like Thailand like I haven't done India mm-hmm. um, I'd love to do places like that um, I've done in terms of Asia I've, I've done Japan um, Australasia Sick. Asia uh, Japan South Korea and like Australia those sort of parts but not New Zealand yet as well so um, if there's a gig in like New Zealand or somewhere like that hit me up yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we're like we, yeah, we got booked for a gig in India once didn't we mate um but it was like a it was like a touring gig. It was like it was like a festival that like moved and it oh, started cool. in like one place and it got moved to like the next one and then it moved. So to the you would have been on like the whole like circus. yeah we would have moved yeah. with the festival exactly yeah. like a circus. But <laughs> exactly. It's sadly, like, that was affected COVID. by COVID. Classic. Yeah. Mate, everything. Classic. 2020. You guys, man. That was oh, I, like you were just saying. Especially bad year, I think, for us, <laughs> for our yeah. plans. It was at least. literally when everything was kicking off, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. Has that? Have you felt like that has? obviously it rocked you but ha- have you sort of gained a little bit of grit or something from it like what have been the benefits of that happening we already had a bit of grit we already <laughs> yeah, yeah we got double grit <laughs> like, I, yeah. I mean it inspired the album so there's yeah, yeah, definitely absolutely. a benefit in that cool. sense and we still managed to be creative through the mm. through the lockdown we made an EP and definitely developed our production skills and recording abilities so mm-hmm. lots of benefits there but I think the live side of things really did get affected for us yeah. but 
we're building it back up. We've just yeah. been out on, out on tour with Tom Grennan, which was great. Yeah, amazing. Some cool things coming up this summer. So yeah, just got to rebuild it, I guess, and yeah, get that momentum back. It's so, all about the momentum. It is. Yeah. All about the momentum. Okay, so the beauty of live gigs is that not everything always goes according to plan. Mm. Um, what's the worst thing to happen to you guys on stage? It's funny, things go wrong all the time. Yeah. Even at like, sort of gorillas level, sort of like, because there's, there's a lot of technical things that need to be working at 100%. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, uh, we don't use much backing track, but we have to do everything to click because of the visuals. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe something happens and we have to take a song in a certain direction and it's out of sync with the visuals. Like, those things happen all the time. Um, I mean, we've had, I've had, I personally have had like issues with power and like my pedals just sort of cut out all the time. I actually had it, the first note of the first gig at Coachella, like this huge, like this big song called M1A1, my mute pedal was on. Oh, no. So like the first note it just wasn't there. It was so embarrassing. Could and, you like, blame the roadie for that, or was that solely was, on you? I was trying to, but I was just like, yeah. I, and I thought back was like, actually, I like it muted yeah. initially, <laughs> so I turn it off myself, and I just didn't. I don't know why, but um, that was painful. But going back to like, because I started playing shows, solo gigs, just like acoustic in pubs and doing you know really small tours with like indie singer songwriters and stuff and we had all sorts like vans breaking down um driver being uh pulled over and like he had his license revoked while on tour wow, really yeah yeah, yeah of, no, of the sure. tours yeah it was, a, it was it was literally it was a four by four we just like he borrowed i can't remember whether he borrowed it or whether it was his but we were just in a car for this tour because it was we were on them levels like yeah and he like it was bad like he was caning at like 100 miles an hour on a on a motorway for some i can't remember we had to get back it was one of those where like couldn't afford to stay um at a hotel or something so we were driving back like every night on this tour to like stay at home and then we'll go back out and for some reason this guy was cooking so fast like to the point where like we saw these blues and twos like these lights behind us police and they were so far back, we didn't even think that it was for us because we were going that fast. And eventually they pulled up beside and was like, t like pull over. It was, I can't remember what we did. Like we had to like pull up somewhere like a service station and get someone else to like take over. But it was. And he, you say he lost his license there and yeah, there on the spot. Immediately, <laughs> bro. Like, he, and he only didn't, he didn't start driving until relatively recently. Like it was, it was a serious, and I think he probably already had a couple issues with his license. Um, but you know those things happen and you just sort of crack on and just sort of try and make it work somehow shit I just thought of a really funny story I used to know this guy um, and he, well, he passed his he passed his test when he was 17 right um, his driving test and uh, he uh, he got a car from his mum his mum had just got his car but they hadn't sorted out sorted out the uh, insurance right but like the insurance started on like the Monday and it was like the Saturday or the Friday okay um and uh, he went to his mates for the weekend and, and drove the car. Right. Um, and uh, oh, no. he, <laughs> so he went, he went to his mate's house and he was going to just stay over. And for whatever reason, he, he got bullied into like driving everyone home. No. And of course he'd had like a few beers. No. Um, and it wasn't like wasted. I think he just had like a few beers and um, yeah, drove home, like going really slowly. Um, and uh he got pulled over by the police uh, and he so he had his license for like 24 hours or something and immediately it went yeah lost his license because uh, he was driving over the over the like limit over the limit he was driving without insurance <laughs> maybe he was speeding maybe, maybe he, there was something it was else like the that, trifecta it was like, it was like <laughs> everything that could have gone wrong yeah <laughs> basically I think went, the roads are safer without him on them yeah. by the sounds that sounds, that sounds he got, right he got like a two year ban wow. um, so he couldn't and then and also he got two year ban and he had to retake his test oh my <laughs> days that fills me with dread because literally I've just come from a driving lesson I've got two more oh, I don't drive yet um I'm literally my test is next week yeah well don't be giving anyone lifts Mate, home alright no, <laughs> no one's getting a lift for at least a year or two no one <laughs> that's funny um, so yeah shout out Craig if you're listening yeah so taking it back to gigs is there a most treasured memory you have um, or a favourite gig or a career highlight that you'd like to share I mean there are 
I'm actually in a really lucky position where like, I've been doing this. It's the only job I've ever had. So I've been doing this since I was 18. I'm 35 in like a week. Um, so it's quite a little while of quite a spectrum of things. Like I said, like from starting out literally playing to three people, if that, or a pub where no one knows, like open mic nights and stuff um, to, you know, arenas and headline festivals it's been i think each bump bump up has been great like the first solo show i booked through like myspace at a place called the slaughtered lamb um here in london classic um yeah 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 like way back it's like 2007 or something like that um yeah i was six or seven playing those gigs and like having people i didn't know come to those shows like that was really quite special being so nervous sweating on the tube with my acoustic guitar and um overdressed like today (laughs) um but having my friends show up as well to give me some support that was cool and then say when i started doing more session stuff and watching things go from like i used to play with paloma faith when before she was signed and just playing london like soho and east london gigs when we went from doing those to like rehearsing in proper rehearsal spaces and like having generic in-ears for the first time, I was like, oh snap, this is like, we've made another step up. And then she sold out like Hammersmith and it's like, oh my days, this is another, a whole other level. Um, But thankfully each kind of led to the next quite organically. And then, you know, we're starting to work with with someone like Damon Albarn, this kind of, kind of countless um, amazing uh, memories one in particular when I first met him in 2012 we did Africa Express which is a, a project he does where he gets like western musicians and African musicians puts them all together either on a trip or what we did in 2012 was charter a train and went around the UK playing shows with I think there was about 85 musicians oh, wow. on, on this train yeah it was wild but it was like everybody from like Temper Trap were on there, Rizzle Kicks were on there, um, Ray Morris, uh, to like John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin uh, was chilling on there. Um, so are you Uncle playing Tony. on the train, sorry? Or are you just getting so around? So that's on the how train? we got around, okay. but we had like a jam cart. There were instruments on this train, um, so you could like rehearse on there. There was like drink and food and uh, massage tent. It's like, <laughs> it was quite, quite cool. Um, and then we just get to somewhere, take over a hotel. They'd have a rehearsal space ready with like every room booked out so every day the gig changed so it's like one artist wants to play a song but they want to play it with a Congolese drum line and you know a mandolin player and I don't know Tony Allen on drums or something uh, then they'd rehearse that that day and we perform it that night it was like four hour shows every every day um, but the, the crazy mix of people was amazing and I, I had just finished touring my solo stuff at this time I had a record deal um, but I'd done like three months back to back of just playing gigs solo and I couldn't really sing so I was like I'm going to do this but I'm just going to play and jam with as many people as I can and participate and I ended up playing quite a lot with a lot of people and Damon enjoyed the way I played so on the last night he's like so Paul McCartney's coming do you want to come play with us I'm like yeah um, I think I'm busy I think yeah. Yeah, exactly you know what I'm going to get off on that stop oh, um, yeah yeah I've seen the so, time yeah. like I ended up playing with it was like Damon Albarn so Paul McCartney Tony Allen on drums this amazing Malian uh, Ngoni player called Baseko Kiate uh, John Paul Jones on mandolin wow um, I can't remember who was on bass I was on electric guitar it was just so mad and that was like 20, that was 2012 um and working with Damon, it's sort of been mad things like that all the time from like recently playing with like Thundercat and uh, Beck, which is, who's a yeah. legend that I love. Uh, Robert Smith, who was actually one of the, on the, in my head, the Mount Rushmore of British music for me. He's such a legend in my eyes. Um, yeah, it's just like lots of really, really cool things like that. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So it sounds like you play a few instruments. So you went from guitar to bass. Are they the two main? Yeah, they're the yeah. two main ones. Okay, cool. I, write, I tend to write on piano these days quite a lot because a, it's my favourite instrument, but I didn't have a great teacher when I was a kid, so it kind of killed... What, piano lessons? Yeah, they killed yeah, the, the best years, man. <laughs> Beatrice. 
I really, remember her. I was Linda, but again, Linda will probably uh, listen to this, so uh, I'm editing this out. <laughs> I think Be- Beatrice is in Holland. I'm not sure what she's saying, but um, my parents gave us all lessons when we were kids, and it fell by the wayside for me. Um, but I'm really annoyed because that's probably one of my favourite instruments. But of late, I've been playing it a lot more. Yeah. Um, not great, but I can at least play a bit enough to write. Um, and it just forces you to write differently when you, you know, not on your like native instrument, as it were. Um, yeah, but guitars mainly and vocals um, are my main ones. Actually, my first instrument was flute, but I haven't played in so long now. Um, yeah, I, I haven't played in. I haven't played since like I was seventeen properly or something like that. So you played um, for your school. You were in like concert band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bromley Youth Concert Band. Big up. Uh, as yeah, well I used, as, to, I used to play the trombone. Oh yeah, sweet. Um, <laughs> Part of the concert band massive. As well and, as, and the uh, big band massive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the thing about the flutes also, we were sat opposite the clarinets um, in concert band. Who just there was just something about clarinet players. That's there's the arrogance. Like the first clarinet who had like the first violin energy. I'm like, look. It's not as cool. Um, <laughs> so I still got beef. You're just not a saxophone, you know. No one will ever be the saxophone. No. Um, but yeah, like that's guitars are my main main inspo, I'd say. Yeah. Okay, so going back to day one mm-hmm. and your first ever tour, was that a solo tour by the sounds of it, or were you was your first thing a session tour? Tour, or tour? like you yeah, it was a that, se- yeah. like a session like, tour, but it. Um, it was it was with a chap called Jeremy Wormsley, um, big up to Jay Wo, um, who's also he's now him and his uh, wife are a, ba- a band called Summer Camp now, and both amazing composers and uh, musicians and artists in general. Um, but yeah, he was actually a friend of my brother Benga Benga Delican, big up, um, who's bass player in Metronomy. Um, but at this time, I was sleeping on my brother's couch on my gap year. Um, I was meant to be going to uni, but I'm still on my gap year. Um, and he was playing with this guy. He was playing bass in this guy's band. And I wasn't really doing anything. And for, for whatever reason, he couldn't do a certain tour. And I was just there. And he's like, look, have a go. Maybe you can replace me um, or, and, you know, cover me for this for this tour. I sort of learned the album. I went and auditioned and it uh, went pretty well. Uh, that ended up being quite a, a regular thing for a little while um, and it worked out well and that was my first foray into doing that sort of thing but it was really like I said it was really small like low key um, very like I can't remember what I made maybe like 50 quid a week something like that I was like got paid in beer and PDs maybe um, but that was exciting I think Lincoln like Town Hall was like the first first show and there were like eight people it was quite nice. quite far to go and i was like full of beans like i think <laughs> the I, best show you've ever played mate i smashed it up i went i think i, I turned it up to about 11 yeah. i went in and just, just like yeah it was it was really really i true. love those though though i was always told that like you know you, you never know who those 11 people are mm. you don't know like i think it was oh, it was it was it tom odell that played a show um and there was five people in the audience, but one of those people was Lily Allen. Right. Um, Amazing. Just randomly was there to see, I don't know, was, was there for, to go for a drink or whatever and went mm-hmm. through and ended up passing on to her management or her label and he ended up getting a record deal after Amazing. that one show. And if you'd have just, you know, put the winner, oh, there's only five people here and put on like a shit show, then, yeah. you know, yeah, you just never know what <laughs> is around the corner. Like. I agree. Like those, those things have happened a lot. Um, where just someone you do well in whatever context and it could also just be from being a dope person like somebody will keep you in mind and they're like oh I actually liked that person's vibe I liked the way they were I liked the way that they mind their P's and Q's said thank you looked you in the yeah. eye you know all this stuff totally yeah those things more than even I'd say almost as much or more Ability. than your show they they they're the things that people talk about it's just like I guess the music was good, but they were a nightmare. It's like, you don't want that to be the... Yeah, I think you get to a point as a musician where you're accomplished enough to get by on most pop gigs. Yeah. And then a big part of it is, are you nice to be around for 12 hours a day? Exactly. Are you fun? Are you kind? Or whatever you want else? time. Because, most, <laughs> yeah. because 80% of it is not playing. Yeah. Like, you're only, yeah, you're yeah. only on stage for a, you know, an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, whatever. The rest of it, you're eating together, traveling together, you know, whatever, doing promo, like up early in the morning, trying not to be ratty, you yeah, know, exactly. like them like promo tours, man, like radio promo tours, like 
brutal. Um, but I'm yeah, I'm grateful for those for those gigs to five people, whatever, because they ultimately, like I said, with the sort of, you can get just as the same response from a crowd with eighty thousand people. Like we we did the first weekend at Coachella. It's like, who are you when the gig's not what you think it is? Um, do you still put on a good show? Because if you do, then I think that shows a bit of character. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't, it's like, so you're only doing it to get people to say, oh, you were great. Like, why are you doing it? It makes you, makes you really answer those questions. I think also with, with social media, like even if the crowd aren't vibing it, a large, yeah, a group of people yeah. are going to see it. Yeah, and I wonder what percentage. And, that, and that's what people said. Like, they were like, people who messaged me saying, oh man, that crowd were a bit dry, but you yeah. guys looked amazing. Yeah, you exactly. guys did well. Um, I feel like I'm really like shitting on Coachella. (laughs) It was really, it was great fun because again, but like, um, but it's really clear. Like everybody says like, yikes, that crowd. It's like, but thankfully none of us like were like, "Uh," gave it like the, the, gave him the finger and like, we're like, what are you guys doing? It's like, no, 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 no. We're going to do what we do. If you want to have a good time, you're welcome to do that. But that shouldn't change who we are. Go on on time, do what you say you're going to do. Um, and then leave yeah no that's cool do you remember what, what was your first tour that you did with Gorillaz first tour with Gorillaz playing those iconic bass lines yeah there's a lot of them actually uh-huh. um, it's a lot um, it would have been 2000 we started t- 2016 but actually really I started playing with Damon 2013 okay yeah, yeah. Um, met him 2012 we did Africa Express thing in 2012 then 2013 made a record in Mali with uh, Africa Express Project and then started working on his his solo um, first solo album called Everyday Robots we went out and toured that for a couple of years and within that show we started playing Gorilla's songs like we played his solo stuff but then because it's his solo project he can kind of touch on all of his yeah, yeah, projects yeah, yeah. so we were playing uh, Damon's solo stuff we were playing Good the Bad the Queen, Queen songs yeah. Gorilla songs and Blur songs um and even like we played like Rocket Juice to the Moon, uh, that project he did with like Flea, I think Tony Allen, like he, like we touched on everything he had. So started playing those things from then. Um, but it was very different when after doing that, he asked us to be involved in the Gorillaz band. It's like, oh snap. So that was the Humans album tour, which started in yeah late 2016, early 2017, um, which was amazing. It's my first foray into that that world and actually the show's grown not necessarily in terms of personnel actually yeah we do have one more percussionist involved now but I think sort of it's found its feet and it's it's developed and it's it's just changed and it's just it's it's quite different to how things started when I was there mm-hmm. um, and it's a lot of the same boys who, who in fact I was kind of I was the new boy coming in because everyone else had played in the band before right um, and yeah but it feels like family now sick yeah and it's um who is it for it's like petra and angel as well bb's and angel yeah yeah yeah. um yeah so they weren't there when i got there angel uh, angel had done bb's with us um with damon solo thing oh cool um from then i think uh, did petra do that as well um yeah and then we brought them back and auditioned a few more people and then that's become angels become like she leads the vocal section yeah um, yeah well we, we, we just did the, the with the Tom Grennan tour Grennan, yeah and I remember like the last night I was like oh what are you you know what are you doing next which was like oh I'm flying to Vegas tomorrow yeah. I was like oh cool that's <laughs> sick it's like oh yeah yeah we're doing Coachella with gorillas I was like what yeah yeah that's <laughs> yeah. like you've not mentioned that all tour and do you know what's funny sick. Angel's dad is my driving instructor so oh, big really? up Neville <laughs> Silvera <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Full circle. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. He's taught like a bunch of musicians to drive. Oh, really? Yeah. Does and I he... think a lot of them independently. It's not like Angel's like his fixer, yeah. like feeds him musicians. <laughs> yes. I think a lot of people have just found him. Yeah. Find his feet. Is well, he giving you a good like good deal? Because it's not cheap. Gave me, driving, gave me, a, he gave me a bit of a deal, but it's still peak because it's like a lot of hours you got to do. Mm. I'm pushing. I'm on. I'm in, I'm in the 30s probably hours. Wow. Well, that's about right and you've got to learn in London as well yeah so I, one of the reasons why I'm doing my I'm from Bromley in South South East London so like I'm learning I'm still doing my I'm going to do my test down there I'm learning down there okay, yeah. so like, even though I live East London now it's like I'm not messing with that well that's the thing no 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 no, no. I value my sort of life yeah 
I was really fortunate. My uncle was a driving instructor. Mate. So he, um, my dad actually forced him to charge me. To charge he was, you? Yeah, he was going to do it. He was like, I was going to do it for free. Right, and my dad. dad was like, no, you need to at least pay for his petrol. And I was like, dad, what are you doing, man? It's like, mate, sort of, <laughs> like, literally. come on, dad. What's going on? <laughs> Did me dirty. <laughs> um, but no, I was, I was very fortunate. But again, there's, there's, there's a huge difference between driving in Huddersfield um, and driving, doing driving lessons and driving tests in yeah. London. Do either of you drive like the tour van? No, Hust actually drives a van, but he just right. drives like a little mini, little mini caddy. Okay. I've just noticed, right? We, we all three of us got um, um, sparkling water at the start. You guys have got a lemon. I don't have a lemon, mate. You've it's got good a, enough. I'm an ice and slice man. You can't. I would have. I wouldn't have even sipped, sipped that say, empty. I was just bare looking glass. at both of your glasses, thinking that looks refreshing. Why does that look so much more refreshing than mine? <laughs> I was chatting to a friend actually over the weekend who. Lives pretty like he, he lives a healthy life. He doesn't really drink alcohol. He doesn't. He eats pretty well. And he went to the dentist, and the dentist asked him if he drinks fizzy water. Right. And he said, "The dentist said you need to cut it out or oh, cut really? it down because it's whatever. It's damaging the enamel or whatever else." Wow, it's so Is that yeah. A thing? And so now he already lives like a really healthy lifestyle, and now he's having to limit himself to one a week. Oh my god! <laughs> he's like, what, yeah, what's life worth living? You can't for? win. I was going to say, like, I'm too healthy yeah. actually. <laughs> But, and it was so like we've got to watch this stuff. This a is a serious actually, issue. Yeah. yeah, apparently so. So Mate. that's the takeaway. Start limiting it. Oh, I, I mean, I live by my soda stream at home. Same. Me too. I actually, I also don't drink um, like anymore. So it's it's my jam. Like fizzy water is like one of my one of my last bastions of things I can do. Um, yeah. So if they take that away from me, I don't know what I'll be able to do. Yeah. So coincidentally, I heard you on One for the Road, a podcast about mm. stopping drinking. Yeah. And that was actually bizarrely like literally a few days before we first met. Right. During the Andy Burroughs podcast. So that was yeah quite a serendipitous moment. Dude, that's crazy. That's cool. But yeah. So how, how is how has that been for you? Have you just enjoy life a lot more without it? Yeah. It's been. It was a really necessary thing for me to do. It's four years and how many days four years a month and three days now oh, wow amazing um, congrats yeah thank you but yeah it was bad like it was really really bad um, for various reasons but I A it's the best thing I've ever done it's the hardest thing I've ever done um, I went through like a whole rehab and, uh, and but then also like when I came out of rehab in 2020 then the pandemic hit it was like a lot of things happened at once um, but ultimately I feel great um, and that's not to say that everything is like perfect now because that's that's also one thing that people think might happen if you say have a problem with something and then you stop doing it that doesn't mean that it's not just the ultimate cause correction it just means you're veering more towards you're skewing towards a better life for me anyways um, that's been the case and but also it's been hard touring you know like it's as we know we all know here it's part of the culture of what we do um, and also you, know, you play in bars you play in places with bars you play in pubs etc so and just socially especially in this country there's a lot of boozing so it's it's just meant I've had to be a bit more like disciplined in yeah, many yeah. ways like I just I limit my time in pubs or yeah. like like invent in music venues as well like when there's the rider and stuff um like i just spend as little time in venues as possible like i'll i'll be there before the show whenever i need to be blah 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 if i can get out between soundcheck and the gig i will and after the gig i'm getting changed having a shower and i'm leaving immediately mm -hmm. um yeah that's smart yeah and it's and it's not even necessarily to be like oh i'm going to be i feel under threat all the time but it's like are you more even if I'll be fine, am I more likely to do it in if I'm there than not? So like, of course I am. Yeah. You know, just from proximity. Um, and also I've done a lot of partying. I know what happens after. Yeah. Like there's nothing new. Yeah. Like I'm not saying that's you should if, you know experience if you're young and starting <laughs> up. Have a good time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But um, if something becomes a problem, you just need to cut it out because ultimately, I love what I do way more than all those things that come with it yeah um i'm one of the lucky ones who's been able to come out of it i know lots of people who haven't mm -hmm. i know lots of people who are in the depths of it at the minute and can't 
I'm lucky. I've been really well supported by my family and my missus, and I've got a great uh, crew of friends uh, who have been quite supportive. Um, and yeah, all the people I work with, they're very, very supportive as well. So, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's it's tough, especially when people like not make take not take the piss but they're a bit like oh come on have come one on, yeah there is a lot of pressure isn't there mate but what we've noticed so we, we interviewed a band called picture this for the podcast mm. last week and they they say no alcohol on the rider at all yeah and it's not that they don't drink but they're just aware that they're they're there to perform and that's the priority mm-hmm. i think sometimes people start to mix the two up don't they that that's it the drinking is such a big part of it that they'll sabotage the gig for the partying sometimes for sure, for sure. but i think the same as the tom grennan tour like tom wasn't drinking and I think it seems like there's starting to be more of a change towards a healthier non-drinking lifestyle in yeah. music. I think in general, yeah, things in, are in general, yeah. skewing towards that as well. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, the word rock and roll, like what that means. Like yes. rock and roll, it, it, you know, turning up, not being able to sing, putting on a shit show, like that's kind of not really rock and roll anymore. Yeah. Like no. people, I feel like they used to get away with it back in the day when you know there wasn't social media or whatever but now like someone puts on a terrible gig and like it's all over Instagram it's yeah. all over you know plus also <laughs> like back then there was no other option like if you saw it was still an event if you went and saw Iggy Pop like <laughs> being sick and like rolling around the stage that was still it was still more interesting than whatever you whatever else was on yeah. Iggy Pop was only in town once every few years like and there was no other way of seeing them but it's like actually we can consume media so much it's actually a privilege uh, the fact that someone's actually taking the time to come and see you when they could just watch you on a screen yeah. or a live stream or watch people's footage from it, you know, um, it means a lot. Um, and yeah, thankfully, there's a bigger fallout now if you're acting like a creep or if you're acting just pissed and like smashing things up, blah, blah. Like, yeah. thankfully, bad word travels fast about you just as much as good word you know travels with you but i literally have rock roll sleep repeat tattooed on my forearm oh, okay um from like when i was like i think i was 19 when i got that maybe 20 which is funny i think it's taken different meaning now uh, yeah, but yes <laughs> that's where i was at it's a big old like sailor's tattoo cool so um we we love a, a travel day story and flaws um mm-hmm. is, is is there a particular travel day or day off uh, that comes to mind as as the best ever. Um, there's some amazing ones. Mexico, uh, we've had some really great shows there, and I remember when we were playing with uh, with Damon on Everyday Robots tour, we went on these um, we went on these boats that it's like a it's like a canal sort of river, but you're all on this boat, and as you as you travel up it, like mariachi bands like pass you and like can like more like latch onto your boat and then they'll play you songs like you give them money and then like they go and then there's loads of different food like little canals that pull up and like offer you stuff and that was fun but we also went to um have you heard of lucha libre like mexican wrestling oh okay yeah with, with the, the masks, masks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we went front row to one of those <laughs> which so was cool. sick yeah. like, everyone's got like a Rey mysterio style yeah, yeah, yeah. mask and these guys are like they're short but they're huge like they're thick like these dudes and they're jumping off these like the turnbuckle and like they're moving so quickly and they're slap they're hitting the ground so hard like it's it's actually quite intense yeah. um but it was super fun because the atmosphere is amazing we all got masks ourselves um i think at the gig we did we all a few of us wore actually masks on stage which was quite fun um i've got a bunch at home actually which is like some of my some treasured tour um memories um but on the flip side of that, I also I remember doing a, a US tour with um, one of the projects I'm involved in called The Very Best. Um, big up to uh, Johan and Esau and Jutty, um, where we all just got super sick because it was like it was in a small van. One of us got really ill, mm. and like it just spread to everybody. So cut to us share. We're all sharing like one hotel room as well, and like. I'm sort of sat on the loo. Where while, was this, sorry? This was in the States. Okay. And it's just like, someone sat on the loo, letting, cutting loose. Someone's <laughs> in the bathtub chundering or like, and there's like someone out, outside waiting to come in. Like oh, someone's being sick God. in the sink. It was just like, everybody got whatever it was because it was such a small space. Um, we still managed to finish the tour, but like, I think Johan got pink eye and had to wear like a, <laughs> had to wear a, a eye patch for half it. He looked like a literal pirate. Um, 
and we were doing this tour and then we'd go and play in a bar and there's like 10 people and it's like oh lord what this is so far from home and this is so stressful to play to 10 people but we had a great <laughs> time and people still talk about that tour to this day because we put on a great show and met some met some really fun people that's and what it's all about yeah yeah make some some we made some memories for sure that's funny it reminded me of a time we were in LA once um, and uh, it was like a heat wave mm. and for whatever reason thought it'd be a good idea to play tennis oh, right. um, in like Burbank so like right. where it's like even hotter than yeah um, and I like burst a blood vessel in my eye <laughs> um, and like you mentioned it wasn't like pink eye but it was like yeah, it was like demon eye. Bloodshot. Like, wow. It looked like an Instagram filter. Like, <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so yeah. scary. It was like sketchy as fuck. But we went to like the, was it like the, the MTV Awards like that night? And I'm, <laughs> I'm like going around <laughs> just being like. The Halloween themed. Every, yeah. <laughs> every person I say, I'm like, I'm really sorry about the eye. And everyone's like looking at me being like, who is Whoa. this guy? <laughs> <laughs> sunglasses, man. Yeah, I know, but there's a time that you can't really get away with sunglasses at like 1 a.m. at like indoors. <laughs> and after party, yeah, indoors. no, it's a lot. You need to be a certain kind um, yeah, of artist I'm to not, do that. Yeah, I mean, I did rock up in sunglasses, but uh, it's sunny today, so I can get away with it. But, um, but yeah, no, everything was okay. I, and there's one of those things as well. Like, I was like, I don't know how long this is going to last. I was like, is this me for the is next it? week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this yeah. me for like the next 24 hours? Is this going to go the whole run of the tour? Like. Uh, you know, or is this it? Just from yeah. is this Eventually me now? You're just gonna have to turn it into part as part of your character. <laughs> yeah, it's part of my look. Yeah, they call me Red Eye now. <laughs> uh, okay, last question before we go to the quick fire. Um, over the years, what would you say um, is your best touring top tip? Like, what what couldn't you live without on the road? I feel like those are two questions. My top tip and what I couldn't live but, without. Yeah, let's go okay, for top I'm tip first. Split it yeah, into two. Um, top tip is definitely and it, it's sort of highlighted by a very small thing so for example if you're on a tour bus and people are asleep and you're staying up maybe you're drinking or whatever and you're coming in and out of where the bunks are mm -hmm. don't slam the door mm -hmm. it's incredibly uh, uh, insensitive and I've had that before and it, it just makes people feel angry like it just especially me I'm a light sleeper you know yeah. um, even with noise cancelling headphones blah blah it's like you just get unre more more unreasonably sort of angry at stuff like that um, because everyone's tired everybody's missing home like especially for a few weeks in or whatever and that's just to say like do whatever you can do just to make everybody's life a bit easier like turning up to soundcheck on time being being at court lobby call on time, closing doors quietly, knocking on dressing room doors before you enter, um, not shouting down, uh, not shouting down the mic to when you when you need something changed like in your monitors, don't shout down the mic, you know, because everyone's got it in their ears. Yeah, those yeah, sorts yeah. of things, because they add they do add up, and eventually people have a picture of you that may not necessarily be true, but just because you've been careless with how everybody feels. Um, because it's an unnatural way to be you're on top of each other you never spend that much time with anybody even like your partner or whatever in such a mad way so like just you know don't be a dick yeah um, and one thing I can't live without ginger shots okay these days that's my like sort yeah, of daily awesome. gut, gut health but also like I used to smash like at least two shots of vodka before playing um, and now I smash a ginger shot or two it's sort of because it's that sort of like right we're about to do this yeah. it's like a sharpener you know just to clear the head clear the palate let's 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 go that's become like my new is it on the rider Did oh yeah shot? for sure for sure it's on it's deep on the rider it's a good shout actually yeah you should add those Mate, see this is why we asked this question it's yeah. this is just collecting this the isn't ultimate part of the podcast this is literally for our personal <laughs> collecting the like, ultimate rider yeah, recording, yeah. um <laughs> that and the uh, uh nowadays it's like having a hotel with a gym is like it's quite even if you don't necessarily use it I think it's always good to have the option um, to to get right physically yeah we made a rule that was like hotels always come with breakfast mm. no matter what that was the rule that we that we Facts. put in that's a big one because yeah. sometimes start the day right yeah otherwise you end up just spending all your PDs and it's like yeah. oh what we're gonna have for my lunch and also yeah exactly your lunch could be yeah. 
you don't know what it's going to be. Like it could be really bad. And also the ho- the venue rider, you don't know what that cheese is saying. Yeah. You don't know what that ham is <laughs> See, like. We're like the least like diverish, like you know, and we we you know we're we're frugal, you know, right. with, with with everything. But there are certain things that that we will, we, yeah. And one of those is good cheese and good ham. <laughs> Cool. Well, um, this is the this is the last part. This is the, the second section of okay. the podcast. It's the quick fire round. Um, so basically, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, the first, the first. Um, yeah. So if, if we were to say dogs, you would say cats. Okay. Oh, you, you can say whatever you want. Yeah. You know, it's it's just the first thing that comes to your head, and you can you can you can just say the word, or you can elaborate on that. Okay. It's totally up to you. Um, so we'll start off when we say Damon Albarn um, Gorillas and uh, the biggest musical influence on my life uh-huh. yeah for sure absolute legend yeah. a living legend yeah actually, it's actually quite hard to put into words actually because it's open it's done so much for me not just professionally obviously he, he's kept me well employed for a, <laughs> a decade um, but when I think of him, I think of someone who's loyal, number one, because like all his crew, all our crew and a lot of the people in the band, etc., have been there for 10 years plus, um, especially the crew. It's like the same guys that work with Blur and it's like I've been with him since the 90s. The Forks, right? Yeah, Forks, <laughs> yes. I'm wearing a Gorillaz um, like crew t-shirt, basically. It says Forks on the back. Um, and that says a lot, I think, mm-hmm. um, about him and how I think I would like to work going forward and how I actually have kind of worked with my friends as well. Um, it's like being being loyal in this kind of game is quite important. Um, but also I think his superpower, more than his obviously amazing writing, uh, which is great, but I actually think he puts great people in a room together. Like he attracts amazing people, but he makes sure cool people are in the same room, mm-hmm. um, including like that I say better than people or whatever like everybody gets better by having this cool diverse mixture of people in a room at the same time and that's I think what he does best he opens people up to new things because he's because he's allergic to repeating himself oh really he's he cannot do it like it literally physically doesn't work with him like even if we played a song this uh, we played the same song a hundred times every time we play it there's something different about it he's also not worried if it goes wrong we've re- we restarted songs like on big big stages like just like stop it start again if it's oh, really, really gone. Do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah no really? straight up if he makes it like a, if he makes a pure clangor he's like oh mate let's re-up that sorry <laughs> and we've done it first song of the set before like it's just like walk off and then walk back on again no 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 no, (laughs) just stayed on stage it was quite awkward actually Um, but there's there's a openness to seeing what happens as well as there being a high level of professionalism and a high level of uh, work that goes into it but also there's like a an abandon and a let go of it Um, and I love that Mm -hmm. that's awesome it's not quite a quick fire that's a very long long fire (laughs) okay when we say Murdoch Flying V, um, and I've got a flying, got a flying V bass that I use. It's a Eastwood Guitars Flying V. Um, I've actually got a tattoo of him on my arm here. Oh wow, um, sick! And his V, the V he's playing there is actually modelled on my V that I play. Um, but I'm a bit like, for one album cycle, he wasn't in the band. And Ace from uh, the Gang Green Gang in Puff Puff Girls joined the band, <laughs> uh, and I, I think i kind of prefer ace's vibe just saying controversial <laughs> uh kind of continuing on from from this conversation when we say jamie hewlett oh sweet the sweetest 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 dude um and also prolific like a lot of people don't understand just how when i say everything to do with the visuals etc comes out of his head yeah but these are worlds he's built for 20 years yeah, but yeah on yeah. top of that the art he does outside of it the art he just sketches like it's he's as good an artist as damon is a songwriter and it's like people some people just think he's just gorillas and tank girl and he's not he's a whole visual artist and yeah. a director and he thinks about color he thinks about sound he thinks about texture he's also extremely silly which is like again something that damon is as well and I think most people in the band have a silly streak and but is also just as serious about what they do 
is a really cool balance I think with uh, with that with them but also I think with the people that they attract so, um, and does he come out on the road at all sometimes because he? he's often he's busy making videos yeah, yeah, like, yeah. because they work quite Damon works quite quickly so he might have a song and then want to get it they might get it out within two months and he has to animate a whole video and they had to start working on the lore and the merch and all this stuff so um, but he, yeah he does join us sometimes it's so cool. cool how much the visual side of things is prioritised for sure it's so rare isn't it these days yeah. I think feel like music videos are often an afterthought or not even essential for a lot of young bands nowadays so yeah. it's great to see yeah no it's cool it's a, it's a great show to come and see yeah yeah okay when we say Andy Burroughs you say um I think it's called the Stag Pub in uh, Hampstead, um, where we used to drink a whole bunch. Um, we both had our own pint glasses, and we take it there. Really? Um, really? Yeah, yeah. It was quite fun. We met. We used to have the same manager. Big up to Will Gresford, um, Triptych Management, and that's how we initially met. And we were right. We'd write songs together. We sort of initially met. This was. This is like over ten years ago. Um, and yeah, we'd write. We'd write songs. He's a, he's an amazing songwriter. He's a really sweet dude. He's a beast of a drummer. Hits really hard. Um, and yeah, I just remember him. He's a walking hug. And I just I love him dearly. Yeah. Sick. Um, and then final question. When we say Shea Adelican, what do you say? <laughs> it's getting deep. I, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I say, oh man, new music coming soon. Number one, I've, got, I've been working on new music. The first record I sort of, I think I've probably made and... 12 years or something like that um, but it'll be my for sure my first release um, like I don't know I'm quite a, there's a lot going on um, but I'd say I'm I'm Nigerian I'm English I'm a musician I love cooking I love my missus um, I'm lucky to be here I'm grateful to you guys for, for inviting me on here um, I'm grateful to have the job that I'm doing it's mad that we get to do what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we should all never forget that because there's lots of people listening who would kill to do that. So yeah. um, I think gratitude, I guess, is what I'd say. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, thanks so much for, for coming on the show and um, we'll see you We'll see you yeah, at a fun. hotel thanks, bar man. Nice one. I appreciate somewhere you in the guys. future. Yeah, cheers, man. Appreciate nice it. One. Too. Thanks, dude. Thank nice. you. <laughs> A huge thanks to Shea for being part of the podcast and to the Hilton Hotel Bar in Islington for having us, again. Listening back to the conversation, I'm good I wasn't there, but the boys held the fort wonderfully. Oh, thanks. We couldn't do this podcast without you guys listening, including you, Hus. So a huge thanks to you for being part of the Floors family. If you do like what you hear, then let us know. There is nothing better than getting a little DM or message saying how much you enjoyed a certain story or how our sultry tones help bring to life an otherwise long and boring morning commute for you. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe anywhere and everywhere you can. It's all about the algorithm. You can find us most places at Meet at the Hotel Bar or meetatthehotelbar.com. It really does make so much difference for us as an independent podcast in trying to climb those big bad podcast charts. Join us next time where we'll be chatting to Irish pop sensations Picture This. You can expect stories of how they went to number one in 15 minutes after an unplanned radio performance, on stage injuries, setting records at the Three Arena, and how it feels to have 70,000 people singing an unreleased song back at you. Only on. Meet at the hotel bar.